Next, we Thank are you. diving into a truly engaging session that is Digital Transformation Success Spotlight. In this segment, you will hear directly from the top CEOs who have successfully led their organizations through the complexities of digital transformation in healthcare. These leaders will share their unique personal journeys, the obstacles they have overcame, and the innovative approaches that propelled their organization to the new heights. Prepare to connect deeply with their experiences, their personal journey, and gain actionable insights and uncover strategies that you can apply to your own path. This session promises practical wisdom and real-world success stories that will empower and guide us to drive change. Please welcome our esteemed speaker for this session, Mr. Devashish Roy, Director and Head Transformation and Digital Innovation, Pfizer. Mr. Anup Lawrence, COO, Glen Eagles Hospital, Mumbai. Mr. Parimal Patel, Chief Administrative Officer, KD Hospital. This session will be moderated by Dr. Nand Kumar Jairam, Medica Synergy Hospitals. Get ready to be inspired by these leaders' transformative journeys. Thank you so much. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Am I audible? So, there were electrifying sessions in the good part of the day, and we are here just between you and lunch. Also, I've been told that we are running about an hour and a half behind schedule. So, for no fault of anybody, we have to be crisp in our session and we'll take only 25 minutes. Is that okay with everybody? Right. So, all of us know that digital is here to stay in healthcare. But the question is, how far are we in digital? How well are we invested? Can we do more? Can we do things faster? And what should we do to ensure that we transform healthcare in this country to its maximum potential using digital? And that's the sum and substance of what we are trying to get across to you. Also, in the panel today are people who are in the driver's seat of healthcare. So to understand from them how they feel and their perspectives will be invaluable to all of us. Let me start first with Devashish. Devashish, can you tell us what you feel about where we are today in digital investments in healthcare sector? Thank you. Thank you so much and uh, very warm good afternoon. Uh, thanks THN for ha really having us here. And um, the previous session was really, really insightful, thought provoking, I must say. Um, to start, right, I would say we have been talking about transformations, right? If transformation is at the center, I'll categorize and divide this um, into three, four sections, right? Today, when we talk about healthcare and healthcare transformation, I think everything is centered around the patient or the customer. Gone are the days where we used to really think product first, right? So from a very, very product-centric mindset, we have all moved to a very, very customer-centric, patient-centric mindset, okay? The second is in terms of the care models, right? And we had in the previous discussion, Arvind speaking about a um, lot of partnerships, third party ecosystem. So if you really look at the change that has happened, right, and especially post pandemic, from a very, very episodic based care models, we have today moved to um, preventive based care model, right? Everyone is so proactive in taking care of their health, which also requires a huge transformation innovation at the um, Stakeholders like the pharma, hospital system, the ecosystem, which is health tech, med tech, they all need to change accordingly, right? The next third pillar, which is very, very crucial when it comes to really driving innovation is outcome focused partnerships with health tech, med tech to really scale, sustain and stay ahead in the curve. We cannot sustain without those really, really outcome focused partnerships. Right? And last, of course, but not least, is the entire data and insights part. Today, until and unless we really deep dive into the unmet needs of our patients and customers, and I'm talking on behalf of Completely Pharma, 
we cannot really come out with solutions which really drive adherence, which really help us drive changes in the positive health outcome for our patient and consumers, right? Coming to the investment part, I think our investments are completely driven basis the needs that we are solving for, one. Second, today when we talk about requirements, healthcare is evol evolving every day, right? So we really need to be agile in what we are really developing. The solutions that we develop need to be really viable, scalable, not only within country, at a regional, at a global level, right? And as well as keeping pace with the tech stack system, which is the enterprise solutions, so that all the disparate data sources, right, that we have really, really talk one language, we really have interoperability at each level solved for, which really creates this transformational experience for our end users or customers. Thank you, Devishish. That was very comprehensive and enlightening. Let me now move to Anup, who is into hardcore operations. Uh, Anup, you will agree with me that not every hospital or hospital group invests equally into digital. The questions are, how important is it in your opinion to invest in digital? And what is the quantum of investment that you think it should be in terms of percentage? And how do you decide where the investment should go? Good afternoon. Thank you so much for the question. So uh, to better explain and answer this, it all depends upon the model that you're working with. So I'll be very candid, like how uh, healthcare has evolved in the last 25, 30 years. Just, just to give you a synopsis of it, earlier the concept was very clear. Hospitals were seen as an institute for disease management. You know, you, you're not well, you go and meet up your GP, the GP says, there is a need for hospitalization. Over a period of time, uh, it has evolved further. It has become disease management with patient management. They tell you what to eat, what not to eat, when to uh, come in for your checks and things like that. Few more years down the line, there's an addition which has happened which is called patient satisfaction. You're all focused about uh, ensuring that the patient is taken care. He's satisfied. His visit to the hospital is uh, taken care for his disease management with his patient management and the satisfaction. And today we are in an era where we are talking about our total experience. Now total experience is more about the patient is very well looked after. Now there is an attendant who comes with the patient whether he's been looked after or not. Whether he's been uh, uh, given the comfort that is required to. So to answer to the question it all depends upon uh, the model that the hospital is working with. It's not that there is uh, no institute who does real good disease management. They all do a good job. But I can't expect to ask for a total experience in an institute which is only focused about disease management. So depending upon the model that you want to work, that's where the investment will fall into it. Like today, I'm looking at a center which is looking at a total experience. My focus is very clear. My focus is to cater a segment of clientele who has real clinical issues. Apart from the routine work, we do a lot of high-end work. Uh, we are one of the centers who do a list of transplant programs. So I would like to invest into digital to reach to the right segment of people who are actually looking for the right solution. Keeping that in mind, as you see, the country has evolved from uh, the pre-COVID days to the COVID days. Uh, for an example, uh, I don't think when was the last time I've actually written a check or I've visited a bank to uh, withdraw money because with digital platforms like GPay and things like that, it has made our life more convenient. Similarly, do I expect patients to come to my hospital physically? No, I don't. There would be patients who will be sitting far ahead, uh, maybe 30 kilometers from me, 300 kilometers from me, or 3,000 kilometers from me. But if they are able to reach out to me for the right solution to the ailment that they're going through, the only way that can help me reach out to them and they reach out to me is from a digital point of view. So we would 
very carefully invest uh, into digital specifically related to what we would like to cater to and not go uh, berserk uh, reaching out to the entire world for all the list of ailments is what I would say so. So for an example, uh, we are uh, doing a study uh, specifically related to liver transplants where we have tied up with an institute in US, a very prestigious institute in US, where we are uh, you know, trying to come up with a model which will allow our patients to connect with us directly, digitally. And based on that, we will be in a position to tell them how they are progressing, whether they need to really come and visit and require an hospitalization, or they're doing well, and they continue to do the same way. So it's an investment, no doubt about it. There's a lot of hospitals who has invested heavily uh, into IT to develop apps and reach out to uh, various ways by which uh, they can cater to their patients. Uh, but it comes with a cost. So we are doing it very selectively. But yes, it's an investment that we would all look forward to do it if we have to reach to the right targeted audience. Thank you. Dr. Parimal. All of us are aware that today innovation is the only direction in which digital adoption can happen, innovative digital adoption. During this process, you need the buy-in of clinicians and you need clinical support to ensure that whatever you invest in is appropriate. In your opinion, are you sure that we are doing this right? Is there a better way in which we can ensure that this is done, and as a corollary, how do we ensure that the standards that were spoken about in the last uh, part of the previous session are adhered to, and that we ensure patient safety and appropriateness in the digital transformation? Thank you, sir. I would first of all say that the generation what we are sitting here is transforming. I'm born in 73, no mobiles, no telephones, and here we have WhatsApps. So we have transformed. Coming back to healthcare technology and digitalization, let me see, we had doctors who used to palpitate our nerves and tell us the disease. Today we have doctors who write a list of battery of tests to get into the details. How digitalization is going to help this? A lot of innovations happened. Yes, doctor needs, I am, I'm again coming back to three points, a triangle. One is people, second is process, and third is technology. People, if I say digitalization, is my team ready? May it be clinical, may it be non-clinical. Let me be very honest, all HIMS before COVID, most of them were just for billings. So let me be very honest, during COVID, I was working with 1200 bedded hospital, a government hospital, which was enabled as COVID hospital of the city of Ahmedabad. Everybody was surprised. This was six months old hospital, which I got inaugurated by our prime minister. When I was pushing digital, everybody used to oppose as even in our family for a channel, there is a conflict. So in those areas, when it came as a disaster, medical disaster, everybody was searching, where is that guy who was telling us to use this way? So I think chaos leads to creativity. Second point, people, let doctors be on board, let them buy their ideas, let them take their say into the system rather than putting top down. Because most of the hospitals buys or in, implements uh, the systems of hospital management without having consensus. 70% of the digital era of HMIS gets failed in the first two years. Why? The question if we ask, 40% of the staff attrition, the person who wanted that product has left that company. Now who is the owner of it? The doctor who wanted certain things was not heard. The pathologist who wanted what was my, he rightly said, SGOPT, SGPT levels of liver transplant patient before and after, say 20 days, where is that, the data? 
data is there in the system, but the people in the transition are lost. So my immediate reaction to it, your people, are they ready or you're leading to a disaster? Because we are very attractive, fancy saying the world called digitalization, but let me, if my friends tell you, 70% of this fail in the first two years. Because you are not thought about the people, and from top down, if you put it, it will work for first six months as a, as a new uh, invention that has happened to a system. But evaluating it after six months, it is lost. Second, we blame that this product was not good because most of the people when I interact in my healthcare sector, he said this is bad and this is right. I said nothing is bad, nothing is right or nothing is good. It is about the circumstances that you have implemented and the challenges you have faced, you have not overcome it. Technology is an enabler to make your decision. May it be clinical, may it be non-clinical, but your people, very important, if they are not ready, we are leading to a disaster. Let me give one example during my COVID days, somebody walked to my room and asked me, hey, sir, we have 20 kL of liquid nitrogen, or liquid oxygen tank. I have around 220 patients with an average oxygen of 200 liters per minute. Can you tell me how, how long this tank is going to work? Nobody thought of it till COVID stuck. 20 kL oxygen tank, 220 liters a minute and around 250 patients. Now who is going to answer this? Audience, can you even help in this? Now you go back to your school days, like liters to volumes and then predicting and coming back to the stories. No textbook teaches you this. No hospital management course will teach you this. This is real time life experience examples. All of a sudden, the head of Ahmedabad city, the commissioner said, can you give me a predictive analysis that in next 10 days, where are we going to lead it? Who taught the predictive analysis in your textbook of your school days or master graduations? Nobody. Are we adopting the change? That's the reason the first sentence I say is we are transforming. Our generation is transforming. Are we ready? If, if doctor says that, you know, I want HBAC1 level of 40 to 60 age group in my hospital for a research purpose, do you have that data? Data are there. Who knows how to extract data? Again, he will ask to that vendor and that vendor person has changed, no reply. Do you have keyboards in your hand where you can handily manage that? It's a million dollar question. Data is there, are you knowing how to use data? Where to extract data? By the time you know that, that person has changed. So, healthcare, I say yes, digitalization is very good. It's a fancy dress that you can see, but I'm worried about the first two years, that 700 days, if you don't carry hand on hand with each department, we are leading for a disaster. I always say hospital and aeroplane, that Boeing 737, we are in a similar lines. If one screw is loose enough, can you imagine what can happen at 30,000 feet? So IT or digitalization is one that screw if nobody understands it, you're going for a disaster. And rightly said in my predecessor, because that's a benchmark sessions from morning that I've been hearing here, that everybody has taught us something very unique. India can scale up, India can do it. India can go to moon around less than 10 kilometer per liter. That's what our PM said. Are we ready to take it? Is the inspiration journey a leader has to think strategically investment or the return is not the question here. It is how it's going to help. Let me tell one doctor, okay, by doing this, I can publish your 10 papers. He would be more excited to use it rather than saying, please use it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So that brings us to an important point. We are not regulated today appropriately, and that is a fair statement. I don't believe that any innovation can be looked at from the regulatory point of view in India today. Do we need regulation? I'm going to open this question to all three panelists for a quick answer, starting with. So we are running into an era where we talk about a lot of data, privacy, and uh, content. Now, uh, if you honestly ask me, uh, 
this is a pure traffic police, which tells you when to drive and when not to drive. It tells you when to stop, and you have to be cautious about it. Regulations are very important, and I think it makes a lot of sense, uh, because we have not, uh, as a country, we have not come to a, re uh, uh, a level where we are very open about things. I think, uh, as an operator, I do see a lot of uh, patients walking into the uh, institute where they would be very careful about disclosing their uh, status. There could be uh, times when patients would be HIV positive. They're not very comfortable. And uh, should we deny them treatment? No. We will uh, definitely give him the same uh, opportunity which we would give it to anybody else. Only thing is, we have our own protocols of handling it. Now, if the regulations are not in place in such cases, or in any, any cases, they'll be shunned. And uh, they will be a scenario where they will lose an opportunity to heal. At the same time, uh, till people don't come forward, and they are not consenting to go forward, I think, uh, as an healthcare operators, as uh, inventors, they will always have this challenge of coming to the right set of database to come with the right solution for the right problem. So yes, uh, I feel uh, regulatories and the regulations which have drawn the lines are very clear when to show a green signal, when to show a red signal, and when to show an orange. So that's my take on it. Thank you, Anup and Devishish. Yeah. So I believe um, when it comes to regulatory compliance, right, it is the essence for healthcare, and not necessary that always regulatory compliance will keep pace with the latest technological advancements, right? And hence, it becomes utmost importance that the industry stakeholders, like people, all of us in the room, the accommodations, the technology people, right, and the regulators, they should collaborate, they should meet at a regular cadence to really come up with regulatory governance frameworks, which has to be viewed at a regular interval, so that all of these pieces act coherently to deliver healthcare at large. Thank you. And your point of view? Yeah, regulatory compliance is a very important part to have this unorganized sector called healthcare to become an organized sector. Point two, when you say regulations, means a baseline. You have to evolve. You cannot have pre-independence act working here, the British era. You have to keep yourself with a pace. Like, you know, even I say, when you got a registration of an hospital, Mumbai Act. Now, those days, it is, we are 75 years old, nation now, but still we follow 1955 Mumbai Act. That has to keep changing, the enacting has to happen. So regulatory, yes we should, but number two, it has to be updated with time. You can't have that old legacy to go on. Point two, you have to strive, two days back, IRDS release, that insurance company has to give an approval for pre-authorization in one hour. That's a historical benchmarking which has happened in the country of India. The poor patient, the hospital administrators were at stake. So benchmarking is very important even in regulations. That's a classic example in front of us. When you're discharged, everybody knows and my colleague knows what's the time or the pain the discharge process takes on. It is every hospital's pain. But who is the culprit? Is the insurance company because he governs this. Now, the top of it, IRDA guides it that you have to deliver in three hours, come what may. Now, they have to check their digital digitalization process, their AI chat box, their systems, the national health exchange to be formed and unified all claims to be settled at one place rather than having individual compartmentalization. So again, I'm saying it is good, but yes, for operational excellence, it has to evolve. You can't be static because time has changed where Motorola pager is a WhatsApp now. So you have to change with the pace of time and this new generation is going to take it up very seriously and I'm very hopeful in next 10 years, your insurance premiums 
would be not decided by the insurance companies, it would be decided by your health and that would be displayed to all companies, not individual companies. That's my say on this. Thank you. So I think it's agreed that uh, regulation is required but it's a double-edged sword and may inhibit innovation to some extent. So you have to have uh, due care to ensure that such regulation is not dumped on us which will prevent us from moving further. There are so many other questions that are unanswered, but there is only one minute left. So I will have to kind of conclude this session. But you know, the points are, are we digitally savvy enough to ensure that clinical progress has moved in the right direction? Are we looking at digitalization to ensure enhancement of patient safety and patient, I mean, quality of care? Are we looking at digitalization for ensuring customer delight? How significantly will artificial intelligence affect us, positively or otherwise, in the coming months? There are so many such, but at some other point in time, I'm sure we will have the opportunity to discuss this and more. My panelists, thank you so much for sticking to time and for your very, very appropriate answers to the points raised. And I'm pleased that we concluded bang on time. Thank you.